Thanks for joining us for this Stepping Stones to AAC Summer Staycation, and we're calling this Chilling Out with Frozen Friends. Mm -hmm. I'm Beth Waite Lefevre. And I'm Emily Cunningham. And we both work for PRC Saltillo. We're full-time employees, and we're excited to tell you a little bit about um, some things that you can do just to kind of get started using your um, communication system or a low low tech board to uh, model and use words with your AAC communicators. So mm -hmm. um, just tell you a little bit about me. I'll let Emily tell you a little bit about herself and then we'll move on. So I'm a training and implementation specialist with PRC Saltillo. So um, I work in our TIPS team, training and implementation products and services. And in my role, I make a lot of implementation materials and uh, on, teach online classes and resources to support our customers and our excellent consultants like Emily. I am uh, the Los Angeles Regional Consultant, and I am an SLP and AAC specialist. Um, I was a, in the school district for quite a while and some private practice just on the side for fun because you can't get enough. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And um, I've been working for PRC Saltillo covering the Los Angeles region for almost two years now. All right. So that I think we'll shut our cameras off and we'll go on here. So we told you about us. We'd like to know um, who's here. So if you would put in the chat, if you're a parent, um, an educator, a paraprofessional, a speech language pathologist, um, behavior person, whatever you may be. Um, so we always like to know who's with us. And because it takes a village, as they say, to provide our um, AAC communicators with all the services they need. So I see we have a couple of SLPs with us. Yep. And a paraprofessional working in preschool. That's awesome. So, yes, we know that we uh, we need a lot of players on our team to make sure that we're providing the best services. And so this this series has really been developed to help people uh, who are beginning to use AAC systems to better understand and kind of how to get started with some very simple activities. So um, we were saying earlier, this is an entire series that we launched since um, August or September, maybe. And this is the final month of that series. Uh, but you can find all of the previous ones on our YouTube channels, on our PRC brand YouTube or our Saltillo YouTube channels. A lot of really good information you might want to go back and look at. If you didn't, if you missed those, to see if there's some things that would be of interest to you and the people you support. And Taylor, you're the sister and a caregiver of a new AAC user. Fantastic. That's wonderful. So we want to begin our AAC journey and we want to talk about, we know that that it really is a journey. And, and we say that a lot, and you may hear that a lot. And what that really means to us is the fact that we know that nobody starts out knowing exactly where they're going or what they're doing um, with AAC. Everybody starts at a certain sp a point and you learn and grow and move along that path as you acquire new skills. And as they say, you do better when you know better. I got into this field over 30 years ago, and you might imagine a few things have changed since then. So sometimes I play the game of, oh, if I'd only known then uh, what I know now. Um, and I just know that, again, I continue to change and grow and, and do better as I learn. So that's part of our journey is that we learn new strategies and, and new skills, and then we try to adapt and offer those to help our communicators. And we know that communication partner skills the things that we do as the people who talk with someone who uses an AAC system really do impact um, how well they can interact. And there's a lot of research that shows that. So that's partly uh, what we're doing tonight is we're talking about ways that you as the communication partner can provide more interactive opportunities. So there's a couple of handouts you have access to, and they're basically tools that can help you um, along this journey. So this is a, a tool that can be used to kind of help you think about intentionally planning for an activity. So intentionally planning what kinds of words might I want to use and then planning out that, that script. What am I going to say or what questions am I going to ask? And then how am I going to find those words on the device? So 
We'll be using this tool quite a bit this evening so that um, you can get a feel for how it works. And then you've got a blank copy that you can have um, moving forward that you can use also for yourself when you're planning these activities. So by the end of our, our 30 minutes together, the goal is that you would know how to use this sheet in your setting and feel comfortable giving that a try. Now, because it is a lot of information, we also have a uh, handout for you that kind of explains what goes in that tool. So when we get finished and you're like, oh, yeah, yeah, what did Emily and Beth say? You've got this copy that you can go back in and remind yourself of what goes in each section. Okay, so tonight we're doing something. We called this summer staycation because honestly, we had to create this uh, topic back in um, the fall. We put our series together and we knew we wanted to do something about summer staycation, something you do at home, something that's fun in the summer. And so we have a, a really cute activity with water. And so why did we choose water? Well, it's something you can easily create. It's gonna, you'll see when you see our video, it's something that you can create at home. Um, who doesn't love playing with water? I mean, everybody enjoys playing with water. And certainly if we're coming into summer months and it's um, a hot day, this would be a fun activity that you might be able to do with your child or with your students or clients um, that would kind of keep you cool. So we like to think of these things that don't take a lot of, of money or, or you know, pre-planning, so to speak, as far as not to have a lot of materials or go out and buy stuff. We like to think of things that are things that you might have in your classroom, things you have at home that then you can turn into a, a, a fun language and communication event. So that's what we're doing with our water activity this evening. And these are two examples of um, light tech communication boards. So in AAC, we, we use a lot of different kinds of systems, different kinds of vocabularies, and they're all organized a little bit differently sometimes, but we have provided a couple options for you in the content section of this class tonight. So you're able to um, save them, download them, print them out, laminate them, paste them up around the house, um, keep them up, you know, and saved on your phone for just quick access to these visuals. It gives a lot of support, and we're going to talk to you today about how to use this to model and basically use visual representation while you're talking, and that's what really helps teach someone who is using AAC how to find the words they need or um, just to be able to repeat and, and use kind of the words they're being exposed to um, for more more fluid uh, language and growth over time. So we have both of these options provided in the content section. The one on the left is our Unity 84 um, vocabulary. That's a MinSpeak vocabulary system by PRC. And the one on the right is our WordPower 96 printout. And that is a Saltillo vocabulary system. So either one of those can be um, downloaded and printed out and used um, with your activities. And we'll we'll go through and show you how to use each of those. Um, tonight we'll be focused on one. And then when we have our second session, another stepping stones, we'll use the other one to really um, show you the modeling. Um, anybody, if you feel comfortable, if you are using one of these vocabularies, would you type that in the chat? That always kind of um, is interesting uh, for us to know also is if you look at this and go, yeah, that's the one we have. Yeah, both. And and yeah, Lamp Words for Life is, uh, we don't have that represented, but it's a similar version to the Unity one that you see there. It does use the MinSpeak symbols. So awesome. Thanks for sharing. I'm sorry, Beth. I think I lost my audio. So give me one second. Okay. Oh, there we go. Now I can hear you. Oh, okay. Can you hear me still? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I can. Okay. Um, okay. So, yeah. So oh. I'm going to let Emily set this up. She did this video. And so I'm going to let her uh, set it up a little bit here. Thanks, Pat. Okay. So this is the introduction of our activity. Um, 
we picked a frozen friends activity where we're going to make ice cubes out of toys that we have on hand. You could use really anything that's waterproof and safe to be frozen in ice. And so this first part is without any um, modeling, without using any AAC to really support the, the language that I'm using verbally. It's just going to be me talking and kind of demonstrating uh, my what I'm what I'm doing. And what we're asking from you is while you're hearing me talk, I'm using some core words that I can repeat and use in different situations. And I we want to hear which ones you're um, hearing repeated over and over, which core words you're seeing being used and modeled that we might be able to demonstrate with our light tech communication boards. Yeah, so if you would just chat those out as you hear them, then we're going to go back and do something with those later. So I'm going to play my video. If for some reason you don't hear the sound, let me know, but it should you should be able to hear it. Frozen friend. I want to make some frozen friends. So I have up. Oh, I have some toys. And we have water. So I am going to get a toy. Which toy should I do first? I have my fish. I have yellow bears. My avatar or red beads. Do you have a, a toy you want to try? <laughs> I get a cup and I need to put a toy in. Should I do my fish? fish. The fish? The fish. Okay. I need to put the fish in the cup. And so there was a lot of uh, fringe modeled there. So there were a lot of specific noun names. And I was doing this virtually with um, with a client and so she I did want to hear her opinion of which one she wanted me to use but you're yeah I see get have put do all of that in the Frozen chat and you're right um, those are some of the core words yeah so we what we're gonna do what we're gonna do now is we're gonna use that tool we talked about I'm gonna put in those words so we said some of them were get Mm -hmm. Put, put, mm -hmm. do, have, whoops. Okay, so we're going to think about these are some of the words. And, and the thing with the core words is what I think is really awesome about them is you could have different words too. So we could, we, I heard the word in. Um, you could have different words for this activity. You could do this activity again and use and use a whole different set of words. But it's just to kind of help narrow down out of all the words you could possibly use for this activity, what might be some that you want to focus on. So we've got those at the top and we're going to come back to that document in a little bit. Mm -hmm. So on our page here, we have those core words that we can focus on. And then we do have a section that talks about open ended questions and another section that talks about comments. So we wanted to make sure to cover the topic of open-ended questions in a way to help you understand why and how we use them and to really see the benefit of switching your uh, verbal speech and your modeled speech to open-ended questions. It is very comfortable and natural to ask yes, no questions or to ask closed ended questions that have a single right or wrong answer, but that doesn't really give um, much ability to encourage natural communication or to allow someone to express themselves just within their own thought or, you know, how they're feeling about something. So what we're hoping is we can help lead you to some open-ended questions for each of these target core words so that you can shape the way you communicate by using this script and then learn how to kind of replicate this over and over in different scenarios. So if you look at our examples here, if we had the question, do you like to play in the water? We truly only have a couple answers to that, a yes, a no, 
you know, and maybe someone would say maybe or sometimes, um, but you don't have a lot of space for developing that into longer sentences. And it's, to be honest, a lot of times when you're asking yes, no, or closed ended questions, it it's not natural to extend that into a full sentence. So do you like to play in the water? Yes. Yes, what? Yes, I like to play in the water doesn't sound as natural as an open-ended question where we might say, what can we do with the water? Wow, then I have a lot of options, a lot of ideas. Things aren't necessarily right and wrong. And I can really communicate naturally, which is a back and forth conversation. I could play. I could drink, I could cool off, um, I could put something in it, I could freeze it, I can melt something, I can splash. There's a whole lot of options that really allow for that interaction and that engagement when we ask these open-ended questions. So it really so is thinking about how you rephrase maybe the questions that you might use to provide mm -hmm. that opportunity. So we're gonna go back to our form again and we're gonna think about these core words that we chose, like the word get, and thinking about that activity of making the little um, characters in the, in the ice cubes in the water, what might be a question or a comment we might want to make during that activity where we could actually use the word get um, in the phrase. So type that in the chat, if you would, your, what you think you might say as you're doing that activity and with the word get. I could see saying, get it. If we wanted to make it a question and we wanted it to be open-ended, what might we ask? Oh, how do we get ice? Yeah, we could say like, what, what should we get? What yep. toy should we get? Yep. Awesome. Okay, what about the word put? Same kind of thing. We can ask a question or make a comment. Where should we put it? Excellent. And what about, uh, let's say the word do, what would we wanna do for the word do? We could say, what do we need? Mm -hmm. What should we do? Mm -hmm. Yep. That kind of thing. Okay. Mm -hmm. so you can see as you start building this script, it's kind of helping you think to do some, you know, kind of planned, pre-planning, intentional thinking about what am I going to say so that when you're in that moment, you're not going to freeze and think, what should I do or say? And that doesn't mm -hmm. mean you can't say another word. Absolutely. Um, it just means that you've got kind of a plan going into it. So your what do you like about ice? Yeah, I like that one too. Because that's a that's talking about a preference. And there's definitely no right and wrongs with that. Okay. Nice. Great. So, so along, again, mm -hmm. oh, go ahead. I was just going to say along with those questions is those comments. So it's really important to be modeling and showing that there's a lot more to communication than, than feeding requests or basically asking for something or refusing something. We, we want to make sure that communication is natural and that's often using questions, asking questions, giving comments and really letting uh, people know your thoughts and opinions about things. So we want to make sure to include comments a lot of times when we're modeling, because that's going to promote that back and forth conversation that tends to happen when you interact with someone, that someone may ask a question, you give a response, and then there's a natural place for a comment. And so we do want to replicate that in our use of AAC. And we're looking at about their level or a little bit above to really model what they can say now and then how they would advance their language as well. Yes. Yeah, so when we talk about um, 
modeling and using words. We don't have to try to say every single word on a device that we would say with our with our mouth. So if we were going to say, how do we get ice? I may not model how do we get ice on the device itself, but I might just choose that one word. And so we're going to talk a little bit about that in a second. Okay, opening this one back up, let's see if we can come up with some examples of how we might comment or so respond to our questions with one word or with two to three words so we can get some ideas of what we might say here. So if we go about the put again and we're doing a comment, what might be a, a natural way to respond to where should we put it or what should we do? And sometimes you can think about a comment as like narrating what you're doing. Yeah. Like so your comment might be what mm -hmm. I'm doing. So you could say like, I put it in. So you're mm -hmm. making the comment be kind of reflecting what you're doing. Or in this one, we had to put the toy in and then put water in. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, something I didn't mention with the questions that I usually bring up too is I like to also use I wonder statements instead of always qu questions because it can kind of feel like an interrogation or a mm -hmm. quiz if we always ask a question. But you could say something like, I wonder what to get next. So it's kind of like a question, um, but it's not directly, you know, interrogate. It's more like a pondering. You're just thinking, hmm, I wonder what to get next. But it kind of leads to I'm expecting you to provide a response in that way. So the commenting is important. We want to make sure that we do get some of those comments in. So mm -hmm. um, over here. And then we're just going to look at our boards, our different vocabulary systems, depending on which one we're using and find some of these words that we wrote out. So we're filling in our sheet so that we can understand what words we're going to focus on that are available on our board. And then we're going to find them. And a great thing to do is potentially mark them ahead of time going in. So you have a better idea of where to find them. And then you can get a little bit quicker with your modeling and your use of these words while you're speaking. And like Beth said, you're saying your natural you know, speech, nothing's changing that, uh, from what's coming out of your mouth verbally, but now you're just picking these words to point to and show while you're saying those things. So like, what should we put in your touching put? Um, what do you like about ice? You might be touching like. And so you're just showing a visual to that statement you're making and having these mapped out will give you a quicker response time, a quicker modeling time, and might even focus the attention of the person using AAC to be able to follow you. And some people will laminate this and then use a dry erase marker to draw around the symbol of that <laughs> um, or use the, the sticky wicket things that OTs have a lot of times are kind of like the little sticky. Um, the wax. Yeah, little waxy sticks you can put around them. So, yeah, finding the words ahead of time, that's helpful. Okay, we're going to watch the video this time, and Emily's going to model. And I'm going to just start it, and Emily, feel free to talk over it. I'm going to mm, take, take another toy. It. Okay, which toy next? I can take another cup and I can mm -mm. put next. Hmm, which toy do I want to make, make into a new cup, a new ice frozen friend? I can take my blue toy, mm. my red toy, or my yellow toy? Yellow toy. Yellow toy? Okay, let's make her <laughs> go, go. 
in. Okay, now I'm going to take my water. Take. Take my water and make that. <laughs> put that inside. Ooh, I put. Put. In some water. There it is. Water. And my toy. So even there where there were a few times I showed where I might find the words. So for like ice, I, I went up to the groups section of where I would be pushing the button to go in deeper and to potentially find ice or where I would push to find toy. But I tried for the most part to stay on the front of the screen as much as possible because it's a lot easier for me in the moment as I'm talking, but also easier for her to stay and follow me visually when I stay in those core words on the front of the screen. So that is kind of what replicates your board is staying right in those core words and not going too deep into the nouns and the specific words when I'm so, showing. Yeah. So I want you to think about one of those single words that you heard Emily say that um, she modeled and check those out and I can put those in here. And Jamie, I see your question, is it unacceptable to just concentrate on one core word? I think it depends on your learner, but what we also know is that, you know, we can we can model more than than what our learner uses themselves. So if we've got somebody who's not, you know, has a, they're not using many words, we still wanna provide models of words that they might use. You might concentrate on one word at a certain time. Like maybe you have an activity and you say, well, for this activity, I just wanna work on the word go, that's okay. You wouldn't want to just work on one word for everything you do because that would be too limiting. Okay, what did you guys hear Emily say? What was one of the one of the words you heard her or saw her model? I saw in make. Yep. Put. Okay, we'll just do those for time's sake. So if we were going to think about a two word phrase man, we might want to use with the word in, what would be a, what would be a word we could add to the word in to model? We want to take that one word and expand it to add another word to it. We could say it in, we're going to put it in, or we could say put in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can double up on yeah. our words too. We sure can. For make, we could say make it. Um, we could say make it cold. We're using water. We're going to make it cold by freezing it. So um, the idea is, again, you don't have to add lots of different words. You can have a small set of words and just use those in, in combinations to make your your sentences. Um, if you're not sure what language level you should be modeling at on our AAC language lab, we have a screener that you can uh, just a quick, uh, quick questions to answer that can help you figure out where your learners at. And that helps you know, should I be modeling single words or two word combinations, that sort of thing. Yeah, Melissa, I like that where to put, where would you put it? Oh. Yeah, that's a good one, too. Mm -hmm. So um, just to move along here, because the half hour goes really fast. It sure um, does. After thinking about these, what questions do you still have? And do you feel like you can practice this? And anybody have any next steps or ideas that they want to try? I loved your question about the single core words. That was a that was a great question. So we're happy to um, take any questions that you might have. And in the second one, we'll be doing the another stepping stones. We go a little bit deeper into the vocabulary and expanding that, but we also do a part two to the activity. So this time we were freezing and making ice cubes, but then the next one will be racing the ice cubes and seeing which one. Yes. And I should have had that slide on here, but that's June 21st. So that's in two weeks. And you can sign up for that on the AC learning journey as well. So yeah, come see the exciting conclusion to Frozen Friends.